What's up? It's me, Don Tolliver. If I could describe the O's Ultra Open Earbuds, I think I would describe it as very seamless. It can definitely be something that you can style. It's like earring candy. Check out Bose.com for more. ABC Wednesdays. Y'all can play all day. We want books. We want paper towels in the classroom. Bet you want raises, too. I'm Honey. still waiting on the paper towels. Abbott Elementary returns with a new season. We asked the district for more after-school programs. They gave us $50 for class pets instead. Critics cheer. Abbott Elementary continues to be one of the funniest and most beloved shows on TV. What y'all doing out there? Taking bribes. Proud of y'all. Abbott Elementary, Wednesdays, 930, 830 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Get softer, smoother, and more even-toned skin after just one use with the new Gentle Exfoliating Line from Cetaphil. Formulated with a unique triple acid blend that promotes surface skin cell renewal, these gentle chemical exfoliators remove dead skin cells and refine skin's texture while hydrating, resulting in softer, smoother, more even-looking skin. Shop the new Cetaphil Gentle Exfoliating Line in the face and body aisles at your local Target store or online at Cetaphil.com. Hey, Joanna, how's it going? Uh, it's going just fucking awesome. How about you? Fucking awesome as well. Uh, and hello to you, everybody. Thanks for listening. We are Stranger Than. We are a podcast discussing unsolved mysteries, weird occurrences, misunderstood phenomena, and creepy happenings. This time, we're going to be telling you guys about the lost colony of Roanoke. Also known as America's, I don't know, longest cold case oldest 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 cold that, case. that's the fucking word i was looking for i'm tired of shit longest oldest it's all longest the same. oldest cold case and this was a colony that was founded in what 1585 i believe and it's uh, queen elizabeth the first was the british monarch who got this whole thing going it was uh, founded by sir walter raleigh but right. actually his brother started started the whole ball rolling to get all of this done wasn't it like the Virginia Company? Is that what they called it? Probably. But Walter Raleigh was kind of uh, the Queen's pet. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so he really was committed to the project because he was the younger son. So Yes, yeah, so he wasn't getting shit. Right. And like I said, his brother started it. Or his half-brother, rather, rather started it. But he ended up drowning while he was attempting to colonize St. John, Newfoundland. So it, Sir Walter Sir Walter Raleigh picked up the ball on this one. Newfoundland. That Newfoundland, like yeah. That would be a hard place to colonize. Isn't it fucking cold up there? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He drowned, so it's obviously not super easy. Right? Well, the colonists at Roanoke didn't have a super easy time of it either. No, not so much. We don't know what happened to them, but... To this day, we don't know what happened to them. But they didn't have an easy time of it. I am pretty sure that whatever the occurrence was when they're drawing their dying breath, I, I'm pretty sure they weren't like, you know, like, I'm really glad I decided to try out being a settler in the new world. I don't know. I would say. I'm feeling like they were just upon, like, God damn it. Like, I this was a dumb idea. Depending upon what may or may not have happened, I can see it not being super shitty. Well, then again, I mean, like, all life was kind of shitty at that time. I mean. Yeah. You didn't really... I mean... It was pretty hard. It was pretty rough. But you were you were used to it. You were born into it. So I'm sure it wasn't know. really any shittier than it is now. It's just shittier in a different way. True. Like they had to do everything for themselves. They couldn't just go someplace and get stuff. They wanted to build a wall. They didn't call some motherfucker to come charge them too much money and do it. They built the goddamn wall by making the planks and making the nails and all that shit, so... But then, of course, yeah, that becomes difficult when it comes to, like, food and supplies, especially if you've been living in some place like, you know, England, which has been established for hundreds and hundreds of years already. And then oh, yeah. you're out there in the goddamn wilderness and you don't got a goddamn thing. And that's kind of part of what happened with with the whole colony disappearing is they ran out of shit. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, they certainly ran the out of shit. The governor goes to get more shit, gets delayed, and then comes back and they're all gone. And that's super fucking weird. It is weird. And 
Did you read that there was like another colony before this colony in Roanoke in that same exact place? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Got the whole thing right here. All right. Well, why don't you going get more into that? Because we're going I, to relate a story <laughs> of, of, I don't know, of storiness, I suppose. A story of storiness. Yes. Well, I'm excited about that. It's, it's pretty exciting. So the whole thing pretty much starts March 25th, 1584. That's when Raleigh gets the charter for colonization from Queen Elizabeth. She needs the, uh, the colony in North America established, and if he does not establish this colony, then she he's not going to get any sort of rights to the New World. The reason they wanted this was they wanted the riches from the New World, and they also wanted to set up a naval base, because at this time, Spain and England are not on the best of terms. I don't think they ever were on the best of terms. No, probably it's not. It's been because kind I of a long-standing that, thing with them. And I that... believe at this point, England is no longer Catholic, and I think well, yeah, that's like, what's the, well, yeah, what Spain Queen is Elizabeth super pissed about. Is ruling, and she was Protestant. Yeah, she was born Protestant. So super pissed about that. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's King Philip of uh, in Spain that's just not super hip with all of this. And I don't know if that was the ca- same King Philip that her sister Mary was married to or not. Because it's fucking hard know, to say because they all have a the lot same of, names. Yes, we've gone over this before. So yes. many of the and same names, and we'll probably names. go over it again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah he would you know her sister was a hardcore catholic and married to the king of spain yeah i doubt the king of spain would marry a protestant no well actually i think he did try but she was just like fuck you like yeah i don't want to i don't want to marry a catholic fuck that yeah well she didn't want to marry anybody she didn't want to share her fucking power Good why for would her. you why would you good for her Let's see here so right they needed this to be a naval base what so they could send privateers to attack Spanish ships mm-hmm. and privateers, just in case you don't know, are pretty much state sanctioned pirates. Okay. And uh, also, the Spain had a shitload of territory in the New World, and England wanted to, you know, fight them for that. Uh, yeah, Raleigh they wanted to ne- get in on, on some of that action. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. Because I be- Spain pretty much had all of South America, mm-hmm. and they had, I'm not 100% sure of how much of Central America they had, but I'm pretty sure it was a lot. They also and had some of like Florida. At the they time, had believe, right. They yeah. had the south eastern bits of America as well. And they were so super nice to like the natives when they. Oh yeah. Came over and colonized. Definitely, they didn't <laughs> rape the fucking shit out of them at all. Right. There was none of that. There was no they brought, tons they brought of pie. rape and murder and brought pie and yeah, a religion that was really lenient mm-hmm. and was fine with people doing whatever they wanted it was just nothing but good times nothing but good times they brought pinatas it was awesome (laughs) Uh, now raleigh had never been to north america Uh, he had been to south america he was searching for the city of el dorado which is the golden city which uh so he was in the orinoco river basin which is right around present day venezuela colombia it's i think it was mostly in venezuela so in the next month after he gets his Charter for colonization, he sends an expedition out, and they are charged with exploring the eastern North American coast. Uh, they arrive in Roanoke Island July 4th, 1584. 4th so, of July. Yeah. yeah. So it took some, take some three months to get there. They met some of the locals. There was a tribe called the Secatans, and there was a tribe called the Croatoans, and they were pretty friendly with the Croatoans. In fact, a couple of them returned to England to give Raleigh the lay of the land, you know, local politics, geography, give him enough information for him to organize a second expedition. It's like, how the fuck did that even happen? How the fuck did he overcome the language barrier? I don't know. It's interesting. Someone learned. Right? Because it's not like... I mean, how do you get him like, oh, hey, you want to get on the ship for like six months and like come back over to England and... You want to go someplace some... from someplace clean and beautiful and to a very not clean and sort of dirty place with a shitload more people than you're used to? Mm-hmm. And I'm not that sure gonna if they're going to look like you. They're going to look at you like you're the freak. And... Right, right. Yeah. And I'm not sure if they. It doesn't say about the Croatones if they came back with them to England or to mm-hmm. to the colony or if they just stayed there. I'm I'm guessing they probably died. Just because of all of the disease that they're completely not used to. Like smallpox. And yeah, yeah, shit. So in April of 1585, a five-ship fleet leaves England. 
This is led by a man named Grenville. He's got a first name, but fuck it. I didn't. I didn't write it down. <laughs> Grenville is good enough. So they're on their way. Severe probably, storms. I'm guessing it's going to be like Richard or John. Yeah, something like that. Thomas, maybe. Perhaps it's hard to say. Uh, Raleigh appointed him, so I'm sure Raleigh knows. Uh, so severe storms. The fleet gets broken up. They're supposed to meet in Puerto Rico if they get separated. Some of them meet there. The Tiger, which is Grenville's ship, meets there. It's His funny, ship... the world is so, like, undiscovered. Like, it's like, you just assign this whole, like, country, basically, to meet. Yep, well, we'll just we just meet get separated, someplace let's here. meet in Puerto Rico. Yeah. It's funny, because Puerto Rico is Spanish-controlled. And so they show up. There's a Spanish there. They, they're homies with the Spanish. But they're also privateering against them at the same time like oh hey guys how's it going so they're like frenemies exactly exactly I, i'm sure they're probably cool with the actual just the the civilians and then they're just fucking with the military ships it was probably something like that mm-hmm. like they, he's not personally against you like you guys are you cool know. but your government sucks right uh, so they build a fort there as well just for the fuck of it because they're waiting for the other ships to show up um, june rolls around gets sick of waiting for the other ships and so they abandon the fort they actually have never found this fort they built in puerto rico so they abandon the fort and they're heading down towards roanoke again the tiger has a shoal which is some sort of underwater obstruction Mm -hmm. it gets hurt or gets damaged rather it gets hurt it gets hurt (laughs) poor ship Uh, ruins most of their food supplies Uh, they are able to repair the ship this is just making them keep keeping them longer and longer so eventually they get to the barrier islands off the coast of North Carolina, Virginia, present day, obviously. And this is in early July, 1585. And that's when they finally find the other ships. Uh, two out of the other three ships. The One of the ships just dropped off all its colonists, and it was called the Red Lion. And it headed back to Newfoundland to go privateering, because that's what these people did. Getting on a boat and going someplace far was costly, and so they always were trying to find some fucking money. Mm-hmm. And it seemed to fuck the colonists whenever day they did this. So there's four ships here. They start exploring the mainland coast. They get into some shit with some of the local natives, because that's always a great idea. They think one of them stole a cup. Okay, and so that's so they worth sack the shit out of the village. They burn mm-hmm. it. I, I believe they kill the, uh, the chief. Okay, and that's wise, very wise. Yes, it was the Secutin village, I believe, that they, they fucked with, which are part of the Carolina Algonquins. Grenville decides to leave. It's getting late in the season. You don't want to be crossing over the Atlantic during the shitty season. So he leaves, and he leaves 107 men there, along with a fellow named Ralph Lane. And they are supposed to start the colony on the north side of Roanoke Island. Grenville says he's going to come back by April of next year. He's bringing more men and supplies. April of next year rolls around. Does he go back? Grenville's not there yet. May, still no Grenville. June, oh shit, the natives attack the fort. Mm. And why is this? Well, because they sacked their fort, burned the shit out of it the year before, the the village the year before, and killed their fucking chief, so they're super fucking pissed about it. Mm -hmm. The colonists do manage to repel the attack. Now, I'm not sure how many colonists were lost, but shortly after the attack, Sir Francis Drake arrives. You know who that guy is? Drake was the first one to circumnavigate the world, I believe. Oh, was he? I'm pretty sure that was that's the guy. He was on his way back to England, because guess what he was doing? Privateering in the Caribbean, because why not? It's what they do. Destroyed the Spanish colony of St. Augustine. So in the Caribbean? Yeah, in the Caribbean. So that was a that was a blow for them. They show up and they offer to take the colonists home because it's just it's just fucked there and they're not. It's like super you guys want to ride back to England, exactly kind of thing. This includes a metallurgist, and his name is Gans. He's got a first name too. It's spelled J O A C H I M. So I don't know like, how. Is that like Joachim? Possibly, but he is known as the first Jew in North America. Now, the colonists bring all kinds of shit back to England when they get there. Tobacco, maize, potatoes. Funny thing is, is that shortly after Drake leaves, Grenville shows up. And there's no one in the colony. It's been fucking abandoned. So, But the colony actually went back to England with, with Sir Drake. Francis. Right, okay. right. 
So, because I that was the part that kind of confused me. Like, did they all up and disappear too, or that just, that's just how it appeared to Grenville? That yeah, how it appeared to Grenville because he was he finally makes it back. It, just weather and shit. It's not super easy to make it back and forth across the Atlantic at this time. No, and your wooden fucking boats with sails and stuff. Right, right. Oars, what have you. Grenville sees there's no one at the colony. She's like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? And so he goes back to England. But he does leave 15 men there, just for English boots on the ground, protect Raleigh's claim, all of that. So the next year rolls around, 1587. Raleigh sends another group. So this is the, what, third group at this point? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is the third group. Now, from all of the shit I read and watched, there was from 115 to 119 colonists, and either in addition to or including 12 assistants just to help them set everything up. Right. Now, Raleigh this time says that they should go to Chesapeake Bay, Maryland to Virginia area. So it's a bit north of where Roanoke is because that's down North Carolina. Yeah. John White's the guy in charge this time around. And this includes his daughter, who's knocked up, and her husband. So right. it's great, you know, take your knocked up ass daughter to the new world. That's, I don't know. I feel like that wasn't a really great choice for him. But who am I to judge? Right. Well, it, you know, ended up not being very, it, more, more for her, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a very good choice for her. Not so much, no. Although I'm sure she I'm didn't, sure she she didn't had, make the choice, but she had very little choice. In, but John I'm sure White anything. is the one who, like, you know, or ended her husband, up not, one know. of the two, or a bit of both. What they're going to do? John White is the head of this expedition. He's going to be the governor governor of the new colony. What they're going to do is they're going to stop by Roanoke to pick up the 15 guys that were left there the previous year. So they end up in Roanoke, July 22nd, and they find nothing but a skeleton, just one. Just one skeleton. Just one skeleton. Interesting. So the master pilot was a Portuguese dude named Simon Fernandez, and he wouldn't allow the colonists to get back on the ship. He's like, no, you guys are off. This is where you're staying. Now, there is some evidence that says that they had decided to stay in Roanoke previous to arriving. So they chucked the Chesapeake Bay Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, decided that, fuck Chesapeake Bay, we're going to stay in Roanoke. Because it's worked out so well for all the previous episodes. Right. I mean, they've got all the friendly natives around. and mm-hmm. I mean, they got they built the, the neat fort they built. I guess palisades are a pain in the ass to, to raise. Right. I mean, that's where they take logs and they bury them vertically, four feet in the ground, and then nail crossbeams on them and then fill in the holes. That's a fucking pain in the ass because they got to drill the holes by hand and then punch the nails they made with wood in with just a mallet it looked like a real pain in the well, ass well that and chop down the fucking trees to chop make down them. the fucking trees exactly exactly and then dig a hole four feet down that you can fit a fucking tree in multiple tree yeah logs. Yeah. yeah so they're here now seems like quite a bit of work it's yeah yeah everything back then was a bunch of work mm-hmm. so they're here now they're there now they decide they're gonna patch things up with the native tribes eleanor the, gives birth she does eventually yeah well, that's pretty quick after, though. I mean, that's it's like not. Aug- it doesn't take long. I mean, yeah, it, she has it. Uh, Virginia Dare is born August eighteenth, uh, fifteen eighty seven. She is the first English born in North America. Mm hmm. Fifteen eighty seven. So four hundred and thirty years ago. Almost exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, during this time, one of the colonists, a guy named George Howe, gets killed by a native. Wasn't he the guy out crabbing? He was out searching for crabs, and one of the natives killed him. It was probably one of the ones that they burned their fucking village down a couple of years previous, and was it's like, like God I'm going to kill it, this another fucking one of these motherfuckers. Jesus Christ! They did pat the crow tones, and then were cool again. Apparently, so well, wasn't it? I don't. I thought it was the other ones that killed him in the first place. Yes, yes, but I'm sure that all of the tribes around have relations with one another, and so if these white people come in and slaughter one tribe, they're all kind of well, yeah, about they're the whole all scenario. yeah. Uh, they did so. So the colonists did manage the crow tones. They're hip with again, or or rather, are hip with them again. Uh, the other ones not so much. This is also apparently a shitty drought, one of the worst droughts in eight hundred years. Mm-hmm. So they got there late in the season. They couldn't plant shit. Things weren't going great. They had some hostile natives there. So they beg John White to go back to England 
to get more supplies and some men and to come back and help some motherfuckers out. Right. So he leaves 10 days after his granddaughter is born. Very late in the season. So that'd be like August 28th. Yes. And they just got there in July. Yes. Yes. So So it doesn't take long before they're like, we're fucked. Exactly. Now they do have dwellings at this point. Right. They've erected they... the walls. What else? What the fuck else are they going to do? Right. Well, because the fort was already there. So. There was some fort built and they just had, but they, so they had places to stay. Mm-hmm. But just no food no to food eat. No food too late no to, to, to. Crops to grow. And right. They're pretty much fucked. And yeah. Although I'm imagining a North Carolina winter is probably not as shitty as a England winter. Probably not. I mean, never been to North Carolina in the winter winter, so I'm not sure, but. It can get cold, though. Oh, I'm sure it, it can, can get, get cold. cold in but I doubt as cold as England gets. Probably not. Not on average, I would say. No, no. Dive into a twisted 90 spy thriller in Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on October 25th. Black Ops is back with a cinematic single-player campaign, best-in-class multiplayer, and the return of round-based zombies. Get exclusive benefits with the Premium Vault Edition. You get great perks like the Mastercraft Weapon Collection and the Gobblegum Pack for the Zombies Mode. Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Pre-order now. So he sails out. He leaves a message, or, you know, sort of a... Standing orders, I guess, that if they have any problems, they're supposed to go 50 miles inland, and they're supposed to uh, carve a Maltese cross into a tree if like, that happens. Now, I saw that, and that is like the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. Did you see how fucking intricate that goddamn cross is? It just looked like f- pretty much four arrowheads connected to the point in a cross shape. Why not put, like, make it a little bit simpler. Like, if you're in trouble and you're leaving under duress, do you think you have time to carve a fucking cross like that? Hey, they can carve fast. But you're right. <laughs> it, it seems like there it's would like, be... It's like, put a giant X if you're, like, in distress. How about that? Maybe shoot an arrow or leave... A, something, something. I mean, leave an axe stuck in this tree if things are fucked. Something. Right. Not, uh, now, hold three on. Three marks, you know, like three lines. Not, yeah, not... Not this, like, really... I mean, it is kind of a fancy... It's fancier. Even a regular cross would be easier. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't know what this malt... I don't really know exactly. I just yeah, looked up to see what a Maltese cross, cross looked like. Yeah, it's... I don't know what the point of that is. I was like, that right there is fucking dumb, because I feel like if they have to leave in a hurry, it's like, oh, shit, we need to carve that Maltese cross, and they're gonna be like, yeah, fuck doing that. Right, exactly. No. Like, hey, hey, White, how about something else? Anything yeah, they, else. they should have, yeah, they, they that was not well thought through. No. So White gets back to England, and he's gathering all the stuff, but the captains aren't going to go back. No one wants to go in the middle of winter across the Atlantic. Well, plus the Spanish Armada was, like, building up to go try and wage war on England, so the Queen had, like, consigned all the ships. Yep. That was the... So it was like, sorry, John White... Yep, yep, the Anglo-Spanish War was, was starting then, mm-hmm. and... Like, you ain't going nowhere. We need this motherfucking ship. Although, when the Spanish ships did go into the English Channel and bring it, and, well, attempt to bring it to the English, they fucking trounced them. Oh, yeah. They just Pig fucked time. them up. Like, sorry, Pig Spanish time. Armada. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the spring of 1588, so that this is just the next year. Mm-hmm. Still not, you know, still going okay. He does manage to get two small ships. And they're going to go to Roanoke. (laughs) But they decide to privateer on some Spanish ships. They tried to capture several Spanish ships. They wanted to make some money on the side. It was the captain's decision. But they get captured instead and their cargo taken. So they have nothing to do but... Because since they don't have any supplies for the colonists now... John White is just like... They just send them... They just go back to England. so fucking pissed right now. Oh, no shit. No fucking shit. All these holdups, and he's just like, I'm trying to get back to my daughter, my granddaughter. Right. Like... 1590 rolls around. That's two years after his first... Attempt. Attempt to get back. Well, I guess kind of his second since he tried to before, but just couldn't even get get boots on a boat. Right. Finally is able to book a passage on a ship to get out there. The war with the Spanish just fucked everything up and made it super difficult. It's like, thanks Uh, a lot, Spain. Now, again, 
they're going to stop in Roanoke after a raiding mission on the Spanish in the Caribbean. But this time they actually make it to Roanoke on his granddaughter's third birthday, August 18th, 1590. Hmm. Settlement is completely deserted. There's no bodies. There's no signs of struggle. There's no signs of battle. The houses have been dismantled, though. Everything had been taken down. So, obviously, it wasn't either someone else took it down After or the they weren't leaving because there was something immediate right. that was happening. It was just kind of like this orderly, like, disassembling and leaving. And there was no Maltese cross. <laughs> so, that means yeah. everything was on the up and up as far as White was concerned. Yeah. I feel like that is more because somebody was like, fuck that. Right. <laughs> now, they did. Some of the Palisades was still up. And... On one of them was carved the word Croatoan, C-R-O-A-T-O-A-N. John White took this to be good news because what's now known as, I believe, Hatton Island was at that point Croatoan Island. Right. So he thought, he was like, cool, this is great. This is where they oh, go sorry, to. Sorry, Hatteras Island is what its present day is yeah. called. They also found on a nearby tree the letters C-R-O carved. So now if they were going to Hatteras Island, they would be protected by a chief Mantiu. And he was down with the English because he saw in the future, there's going to be more of these people coming by. I'm going to get military help with them. They'll have goods. So he thought it would be advantageous to help the English. Mm -hmm. That sort of put him on the out with other tribes because other tribes were like, these guys burned my fucking shit down and killed our fucking chief. Like this guy, sort of these guys are fucking assholes. Like. Nothing good is going to come from this relationship. Right. Now, unfortunately, there was a storm of brewing. And so they were not allowed to look for the colonists. They packed everyone back on the boat and they left the next day. All the way back to England? All the way back to England. Jesus. So he never, ever knows what happens to his daughter, his son-in-law, his granddaughter, he, he eventually dies without knowing all of this. So now, you know, the colony is pretty much lost. That's sad that he just can't even, like, get back there again. No, I know. I know. It's crazy. I mean, he's older, so maybe health reasons or, right. or something. I'm not sure. Maybe he just didn't have the money. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I feel like if I were him, I would just be like, you know what? Just uh, leave without me. I'm going to stay here and figure shit out. Yeah, but again, surviving on your own. Yeah, no supplies. When you're old, no supplies, or very few supplies. I'm sure they probably could have parted with some. I mean, they brought supplies for the fucking colonists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I mean, what the fuck? Maybe they wouldn't relinquish them because there were no colonists. Maybe, maybe. Now, there was a report from the colony that was that reached England in, in 1588. And this was from a guy named Thomas Harriet. He was a naturalist. He wrote a brief and true report of the new found land of Virginia. By the way, seeing all of these things written is really funny because they don't have proper spelling. They don't have a, right. they spell things all just depends on the person. So found, he's got spelled F-O-U-N-D-E. Mm -hmm. um, now this was a detailed report of the wildlife, the natives. And according to him, the natives and colonists were getting on pretty well. It was a mutually benefiting deal they had going on a lot of people think it's bullshit that he wrote this report because if people knew it was a fucked up fight over there all the time no one's going to want to go colonize it um, but you know right there is some historical evidence that points to military struggles both lane and grenville had problems with the natives that's you know they sacked the village and they came they attacked the thing so the, the fort so because they were kind of pompous assholes. But right, right. They had like the right to, like, oh, you stole a fucking cup? I'm going to burn your motherfucking village. I know, a silver cup by the, I mean, come on. Yeah. Not even gold. I mean, silver? Shit. Uh, now, he, and he also doesn't report that there's any disorder in the colony. So, as far as he's concerned, everything is just fantastic. It's cool. Yeah. Now, Raleigh does actually end up going back over to Roanoke himself. I mean, not until 1602. But he gets a guy by the name of Samuel Mace to go with him. And Raleigh actually takes his ship with. And Raleigh actually pays all of the sailors out of his own fucking pocket because he doesn't want any of this privateering bullshit to go on. 
Right. He just wants to get there, figure this shit out. No I mean, delays. Remember, if he if this shit doesn't get set up for him, then he gets nothing. Yeah, and that what was it? What year did you say that was? That was 1602. 1602. So this is like 12 years after they've been declared missing. 12 years after John White has gone there and come back. And said that they're nowhere to be found. Exactly. And so they do, I mean, Raleigh needs the money. So they do stop someplace to get some uh, some nice smelling plants. Sassafras, I believe they wanted because they thought it helped with syphilis. Mm-hmm. And syphilis was like the flu at this time everybody (laughs) had it so it would be good money for something that would help with syphilis right probably because they lacked the understanding of how it was spread probably well i know i'm pretty sure they knew how it was spread i knew i'm pretty sure they knew how it was spread for a long time i'm just pretty sure they didn't want to stop fucking yeah because really who does so they take too long picking flowers and uh, so they didn't even get to the colony, and they go back to England, and, oh, man, Raleigh gets arrested for treason. Queen's just like, dude, I have had enough of you. He ain't sending no ships nowhere. That's the end of Raleigh. Now, in 1603, another expedition is led to find the colony. So they're still thinking that maybe they went to Chesapeake Bay. But bad weather throws them off course into some unknown location, and... This Gilbert fella who's leading the colony, or leading the expedition, and the landing party get killed by natives. And they die on July 29th, and the rest of the crew returns to England. Sorry. Sorry. They pissed off some some natives, and they fucked us up, and we left. And so then there's 1607, which is the Jamestown settlement in Virginia. Which also, actually works. not good times. I mean, yeah, it ends up working. And, but it's not but a great time. It is not a great time. And this is with Captain John Smith, who we all know from that Disney movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's, he's the actually col- much more of a dick in real life. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he does less singing, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so he gets word from Chief Powhatan of the Powhatan tribe that they had just slaughtered all those motherfucking settlers because they were hanging out with natives that refused to join the with the Powhatan, Powhatans. And so this was re- reported back to England in the spring of 1609. And uh, by the way, Chief Powhatan is the father of Pocahontas. Yes. So the colony secretary of Jamestown, he's the, the, the secretary from 1610 to 1611, pushes him a little bit more about why he killed them all and kind of what happened in the in, in between when they lost him and when they supposedly found out what happened to him. And apparently they had been living pretty peacefully for those 20 years with the natives. Uh, Chief Powhatan himself had decided that this attack was going to happen, and mainly the reason was because his prophets or whatever the fuck prophesied that someone from that area was going to overthrow him. And he did produce metal things made in England, Irish iron things. And so they 100% believe that he did that now some people believe that it was possible that he was sort of fibbing on how soon everything happened like the timeline he was off of a bit and he may have killed those 15 that were left by uh, like he was talking about a completely different group of colonists same area Mm -hmm. different colonists but you know there's no there's no archaeological evidence to support any of this at all Right. They didn't find, they haven't found any fucking bodies anywhere. Well, even the 15, I mean, there was just that one lone skeleton. Just the one skeleton, right. Some people think it was the Spanish. But they were still looking for the colony in 1590. And according to Spanish documents, they thought this colony was thriving and a danger to them. And it's they actually did find where the colony was, but they thought it was just a fortification of a main base. And they just couldn't, Get, they didn't have the resources to make it in there at the time. There's ball deep in war, and they just couldn't be fucking around in the new world looking for some English people. So they couldn't really get very deep into it either. There's several theories as to what happened. There's actually the Lost Colony of Roanoke DNA Project, right. which was founded in 2007. Did you read about that one? I read about it, well, because it follows the assimilation theory that... Basically, all the colonists assimilated into the uh, Croatoan tribe or some other local tribe, all the ones that were left, at least, and 
just lived out their days with the natives and that there were several uh, native names that like had surnames that were the same uh, as the original colonists there and that it was reported that some of the native people uh, on the Croton Island had gray eyes and there was a story about them building a stone house with four walls and that they had learned this from the colonists. So I don't know of anything really hard and concrete, but there was a lot of uh, stories and lore, I guess, basically that led to people believing that they had just kind of assimilated into their tribe or culture or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, in fact, well, this this DNA project it hasn't turned anything up as of this year. They right. haven't found yeah, shit. Yeah, nothing um, so far has come from that. There was claims of two-story stone houses, and they were in these native settlements. One, I'm going to butcher the fuck out of these names. One settlement was called Pekaranikik. The other one is called Okanahon. They claimed that they learned to do it from the Roanoke settlers. Mm -hmm. In 1612, there was an Eno settlement of Ridenoch where they cited four men, two boys, and a girl, all white people with English-style clothing, probably in a bit bit tattered at this point. And apparently they're under a protection of a chief, and they were made to beat copper. Uh, the story is they escaped an attack on Roanoke and ran upriver. Now, the fact that the Roanoke settlement was taken down and not you know, raised to the ground, no burnt husks, means that's, I mean, I don't really believe that. Yeah, I'm not 100% sold on the idea that the settlement was attacked because there really wasn't a whole lot of evidence to support that. And all throughout the early 1600s through the middle of the 1700s, there were claims of seeing people with gray eyes, natives with gray Mm -hmm. eyes. Uh, In 1696, some French folks reported seeing white-skinned and blonde-haired natives of the Tuscaroras tribe. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash campaign to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash campaign. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be to be. Uh, in 1709, John Lawson writes about Croatones living on Hatteras Islands. They're the ones that have the gray eyes, and they are the ones that claim to have the white ancestors. Correct. Uh, but then again, I mean, sometimes this is just tall tales. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's super it's easy like, oh, to yeah, I've seen those. Then. I've seen those white natives. Right, right. And shit, maybe they were just albinos or something. I don't really know. Uh, now, they did find some archaeological remains Mostly just, like, a few bits of pottery, though. Yes, yes, they did. Like, predate, like, the 1600s. Now, they did find a coffin with Christian markings on it. Or at least bits of a coffin with Christian markings on it. But it's in a place that isn't... There's no record of it being a grave site. And they didn't really find any other graves. Is that on the Heteros Island? Yes, yes. Now, if you remember... John White said they needed to go 50 miles inland if they ran into any problems. Right. Now, interestingly, Croatoan is 50 miles from Roanoke, and they did have good uh, relations with those natives. And they have found things that are English there. So they found some beads that were English beads that would have been manufactured right around that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, They found a handle of a English rapier, which is the sword they used. And they found a gun barrel that was used in Elizabethan times, as as well as Nuremberg, Nuremberg tokens, which they also found at the Roanoke site. So there is some evidence, not very much evidence, and it could have just been bits to- taken by the Croatoans. Right. But it does show it could have that been traded they or... traded or yeah. So, it, but it does show that they did have contact. So there's mm-hmm. at least that. And that's where that pottery was, is the... Yes, the, yeah. yes, the pottery shards that, that matched the ones that they found in Roanoke as well. Which I think they were able to date a little bit better. That was definitely like pre-1600. Yes, yes. And they it matched the glaze and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Untrained eye can tell. So there's also 
see now now Croatoan Hatteras Island is not inland. It's, it's south, south. And right. it's still it's an island, obviously. There was the fifty miles inland was a place on Bachelor Bay. There was a Choanoke tribe that lived there. And apparently they were willing to put up some of the settlers. No problem. Apparently they were pretty happy with them there as well. Uh, it would have been smart for them to go inland more to hide from the Spanish. Fresh water, better ground for farming. And frankly, they probably heard there was fucking gold there. And so they went in looking for gold. Uh, in 1885, a North Carolina state legislator named Hamilton McMillan was pretty convinced that there were descendants of the Roanoke colonists living in the area there. They're a Lumbee tribe, and they had Croatone ancestors, and a lot of their native words were outdated, obsolete English words from the fucking 1600s. Yeah, I had heard about that. And they were the ones that had the surnames that matched the colonists. Okay. And they claimed that their ancestors convinced these destitute-ass colonists to go inland and eventually settled in the present area of Robeson County, North Carolina. But there's a couple other tribes that also claim descendants of the colonists. One is the Saponi, which are now extinct. They were in Person County, North Carolina. And then the Catawba, which absorbed the Shakori and Eno people. Hmm. I'm sure I butchered that name, too, because... I'm a name butcherer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how it's pronounced, but I wouldn't do any better, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, there we go. <laughs> now, there's other things. This is a, there's all kinds of things that popped up that have been leading people to try and the, solve this mystery. I thought the stones, the dare stones, were very interesting. That was pretty interesting. Do you want to, do you want to tell us about the dare stones? So, the dare stones are basically 48 stones that were found in between 1937 and 1940. And supposedly they were carved by Eleanor Dare, which was the daughter of John White, mother of little Virginia Dare. And basically just kind of told the tale of what happened to them after her father left to go back to England and they never had contact with him again because before her father got back, obviously something happened and they're not like a hundred, they haven't been hundred percent authenticated, especially some of the later ones that were found. Right. But they, right. They think that like the first two, they're pretty sure are authentic. See, I had seen that the first one was the only one they had a possibility of being very authentic because it was that stonemason farmer Eberhardt that found the rest of the 47. And the first one had said, Ananias Dare and Virginia went hence unto heaven 1591. Any Englishman show John White Gover via, which... I guess was an abbreviation, G-O-V-R, so probably abbreviation. Governor of Virginia. She yeah. probably just can't spell because they didn't have a spelling Well, and it was probably a, you know, a, a, an abbreviation. I mean, you're carving this into fucking stuff. No fucking shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's show is S-H-E-W and N-E is A-N-Y-E. So it basically just had her name and her husband's name and her daughter's name and indicated that her husband and her daughter had died in 1591 and that if anyone found this rock to notify her father. And this was found by some Californian looking for nuts. They found yes. that first stone in, in 1937. And I don't think that all of them, they were found in different clusters. So there's that one first stone. The but one they were all from the same guy. They are all from the same guy, Eberhardt though. found them all. So Weird. what happened was this Californian brought it to the authorities. The authorities brought it to a university, I believe one near Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And they put out, they had a brilliant idea. They wanted to find more. So they put out basically a bounty saying, if anyone can bring us one of these stones, we'll give you $500. And so some so guy comes along like, oh, hey, 1937 look it. to 1941. That's the end of the Great Depression and the beginning of World War II. 500 bucks was quite a bit of money back then. 
And this guy who found the 47 other stones, he <laughs> he had been busted selling forged native artifacts in the past. Interesting. And the language and how the words were used and all of the other 47 stones did not match 16th century English at all. Right. And the information given on that first stone was some pretty, some of that information you had to have, you'd have to know something about 16th century England to write that stuff properly. Right. Like how she said, like Annie, A-N-Y-E. And I guess the back, it doesn't, did you, did you find out what it exactly it said on the back? I was thinking like the second stone is what it said, what happened to them, but. Also, I have sources that said on the other side of that stone yeah. said that all but seven of the colonists had been killed by savages and was signed E W D. Yes, there was it was there was a lot of stuff written on the back. Okay. I, I did I neglected to actually write so, it down. I intended on doing it, but then <laughs> Yeah, so fun. maybe that's what I was thinking of because I think so. I yeah, think so. I took that one to be authentic and then the the others to be not so much. Yes, yes. So the first because one, they side they one and side two. they actually been done with like a drill and... Yeah, I saw that one of the documentaries, some dude who knew stuff about geology went oh, and Oh, are you talking about out. the... the ge- what is it? He's a forensic geologist? Something like that, yeah, yeah. And he went and he checked out the first one. I did not even know there one. was such a field in existence no that guy's pretty dashing for being one too he's an older gentleman mm. seems like he could fight with the sword maybe yeah you have like a an interesting like range on who you might refer to as an older gentleman i do i do <laughs> it all depends on the context who else yeah, is well, around how would you like it if somebody referred to you as an older gentleman okay i don't care well, I'm going to be like, I have a podcast with myself and an older gentleman. Well, see, that's, yeah. that goes to the context because, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I am older by, what, six months, seven months? But it makes you sound like you're fucking like 75. Right. And I'm super Now, young. If, with your, if you're with a bunch of 20-year-olds and an older gentleman could be someone that's approaching 40. No. All right, that's fine. No. Whatever. If someone called Listeners, me an older think? lady, if somebody called me an older lady amongst a group of 20-year-olds, I would be like, I'm going to fucking throw a punch you. Right. Okay. <laughs> but it has, and an older gentleman and old older lady have different connotations, really. I don't think so. All right. Well. I mean, if you're out there with like some 24 and 25-year-old and you're like 38 and they are like, oh yeah, like a bunch of like college age kids and an older gentleman were seen this way, would you be like, uh, hey, excuse me? I would know who they're talking about, who the older gentleman was. Well, yeah, but <laughs> would you be like, uh, that's not me. I'm not a fucking older gentleman. Fuck I got you fucking guys. gray hair. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know. I hear older gentleman. I think 65 plus. You think 65 I think plus? carrying an AARP membership card <laughs> in his fucking wallet. All right. Fair answer. Fair answer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying John White is an older gentleman. John White is an older gentleman. Okay. 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 <laughs> at any rate he said that all of the weathering and shit was in fact consistent with a rock that's been underground for a bit so uh, they it it was probably pulled up because they were building the highways at the time so it was probably upset with the machinery used to to do that and that's when the californian found it Uh, on his search for nuts yeah on his nut search so that's that's I sincerely believe the other 47 are fucking garbage. Right. They're all, because those are also of different stones. So unless she was traveling in a way and just carving what she could on each stone and then decided that she wasn't going to use 16th century English anymore. Right. And that it was, just, I mean, because the, the last group of stones, I guess, was right outside of Atlanta, which is quite a piece away. I mean, that's good, like three, 400 miles. That's from, quite a walk. Yeah. It's quite a walk. That's, we'll, quite, a, that's quite a migration. Plus... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it took a long time to carve into that one stone, oh, which yeah. was like native to where they were located. Right, right, the quartzite. Uh huh. Which is a hard stone. Mm hmm. And so I'm sure that took a long time. I mean, like, I'm sorry, I have a little trouble believing that you carved 46 more. Yeah, no shit. 47 more. 47. Oh, yeah, yeah that's Regardless, total, that so, extra yeah. one doesn't matter. 46, 47, it's still a shitload of carving. That is a shitload of carving, a shitload of stones. Yeah. You take the one and hope that somebody finds it. Maybe, yes. maybe you did Maybe you did another one. Maybe you took the time to tell a story on another one and leave it somewhere that just hasn't been found. 
I'll find yep, a picture of but... the of the of the one stone that we believe is real, and I'll post it when we when we put this episode up, and that way the listeners can see what it says. I'm yes. sure I can find one with uh, the letters highlighted. It's kind of hard to figure out which way it works because, not surprisingly, her hand her penmanship is pretty shitty on a rock. Yeah, it's a fucking rock. What do you expect? If I tried to carve something on a rock, I imagine it would be pretty horrible, illegible. Yeah. When I write on a piece of paper, it's illegible. So. Oh my god, I have like the worst penmanship now. Ah, uh, yeah. I used to have like good handwriting, but it is just shot to shit now because I type so much. Yep, typing, typing and ruined writing. I can hardly write legibly like when i'm writing my notes as opposed to typing them on my tablet yes that's why i use tablets to take notes is because if i was writing them the whole time i'd be wondering what the hell i had actually written yeah i have done that a few times yes yes so another thing that was found was the virginia pars map Uh, virginia pars was old school english for the virginia territory now this was drawn by john white in 1585 and it's pretty fucking accurate, even with the shoreline erosion. Now, in May of 2012, it was announced that it was it, they found something on the map. So there's over a part of the map there was a patch. Right, like he had uh, glued a bit of yeah, parchment over it or whatever. Piece of paper over it, and then drawn over it to basically hide what it was originally like. Like, they didn't have fucking whiteout back then. They so. did not have whiteout. <laughs> and he wasn't going to draw the whole map again. I've seen the map, right. and it's, I couldn't draw a map like that. No, I mean, it was some it serious was, shit. It was very detailed. And so it was, it was probably like, super okay, I'm hard just going to take a little strip of paper, and I'm going to glue it over here, and I'm going to recolor and the that, spot. It could have been done so that if the map fell into the wrong hands, they wouldn't be able to see what was there. Uh, now, with modern technology, they got something called, I think it's called a light box. So you just place it over the box, and I think you're That's able to switch. That's not very much modern technology. And you're able to switch it between. It's more modern than 1587. But. Well, you're able to switch it between different bands of light, so infrared and all that kind of stuff. So they find what looks, what's consistent with a symbol that was used for forts back then. Well, it looked a lot like the fort. It's the layout of the fort itself, like the Roanoke Which fort. was kind of a. It was kind of like. Diamondy. Or, yeah. I mean, like a four-pointed star kind of a little bit. Yeah, so it was like basically a square, but it was kind of like cur. The sides were kind of like curved inwards. It was a Maltese and... cross. <laughs> it actually is a little bit similar. It is. It is kind of similar. Fucking John White and your goddamn Maltese cross. Seriously. So, you want to be a marketer? It's easy. You just have to score a ton of leads and figure out a way to turn them all into customers. Plus, manage a dozen channels, write a million blogs, and launch a hundred campaigns all at once. When that's done, simply make your socials go viral and bring in record profits. No sweat. Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. But with HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools, launching benchmark-breaking campaigns is easier than ever. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. So this site, they've gone there to the site. She should have carved on the stone. Where the fuck they went? No. Oh. She should have been the way, by the way, dad, fuck your Maltese cross. Right. They did have a cross on the stone, but it was just a regular one. Yeah, because that fucking shit is hard to carve. Now, this site where the, the that the map indicates is called Site X. And it... Site X. Site Ooh. X. And they have found a hook, buckle, food storage jars, and bits of guns there. Along with really? The, yes. Along with, the, or, uh, along with native pottery they found there. Because forensic geologist guy went there and found nothing but a golf course. Yes, that would be the Scotch Hall Resort. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they were doing all their excavating to build that, they didn't find any anything at all. Uh, that's right across the river, actually, from where the first dare stone was found. Right, yeah. However, there is a site that's close by there. And that's where they found and all this shit? that's where shoes? they found all this shit, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I figured maybe the golf course had found some stuff, but they're just like, yeah, no, we didn't find anything. I actually wouldn't really be very surprised. Because... Well, yeah, golf courses are pretty lucrative, like, and... and you don't want to have to like halt everything because you found like an archaeological. Exactly, and I don't think this is just some golf course. Like, oh, hey, let's just bring take the kids and get wasted and this play is golf. Like a no, this super is super rich white person. Yeah, golf like course. here's your like, suit old jacket, school, southern and... boy. You know, let's pat each other on the back because we're rulers of the universe. Yeah. Now I don't know if that's actually the case. Yeah, so we don't. Scotts well, Hall Resort, yeah, don't like... sue us. 
but we don't want to bad mouth them. I could see kind of brushing that out and just whatever. Right. Never like happened. we don't want to have to halt our. But then again, our... since there's this other site, the site X that's yeah. nearby, it's also very possible that they were off a bit on the fort location. I mean, the fort wasn't to scale, so it actually looked pretty big. It would have been a huge fucking fort. It would have been probably, like a gigantic fucking yeah, fort. Yeah, yeah. So I really don't think. It, it was probably the site X is just in that vicinity. And he went to the, you know, the the golf course because that was that was close by too. But they were nice enough at the golf course to point out where. Yes, yes, they were. He needed to be looking or where the side of the stone was. It's like, oh, yeah, that place, that's right across the Right over there. That's right over there. Yep. Not on this golf course. <laughs> now, in 1993, Hurricane Emily stirred up some shit they found some evidence that led to settlers and natives living together uh in right in that right around that same area uh, there's a thing called the croatoan project and it's an archaeological investigation into the roanoke every the roanoke situation um, they sent an excavation team to hatteras island and they did find what they thought at first was gold ended up being brass um, a 16th century english signet ring it was traced, so it's got the the coat of arms on it. Right, and a signet ring is like um, a gold ring, and it's got the the top part of the ring is like flat. Yeah, so I believe what they would do is they is that's what they would stick in the uh, wax and then mm-hmm. put on letters and shit, so it could it wouldn't be opened or whatever, or they so could tell it's if not it was like opened. a jeweled ring or one no, that, like kind no. of was, but the the top part of the ring that's like a over stamp. Your finger, yeah, it's 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 flattened. It's like circular and flattened. So they they did it is in this case it was brass and not gold, uh, but it was traded traced to the Kendall coat of arms and there was a master Kendall that was in the colony from 1585 to 1586. Master Kendall. Master Kendall. They also found a couple of gun flints, and a couple copper farthings. So that's. Uh, interesting none mm-hmm. of this archaeological evidence has been enough to actually directly link the colonists to surviving right because this could have been either traded before or taken afterwards yes yes uh, and you know i sometimes wonder if that word croatone i i kind of have two takes on that sometimes i think that maybe somebody else carved that in there to throw whoever found it off. Like maybe That's the possible. Spanish came and did fucking find them. Maybe, maybe. And then they're like, Oh, let's put Crow Toe in. And like, whoever comes here will think that they went there. It's possible. Or maybe they put it there, but not to tell them where they went, but to throw somebody else off as right, well as right. to where their actual location. We're going like, let's just carve Crow Toe in here. And anybody coming along here will think that we've gone this way when we're actually going this way, because for whatever reason, they didn't want people to know which way they had gone. Right. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was trying to send whoever was after them towards yeah. the friendly native friends. Yeah. So that sounds great. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent convinced that that word was carved there in order to actually lead them to a place that they were going to find them. It's distinctly possible. Now, another thing is, is that the shoreline is a quarter mile inland further because of erosion. So it's possible that the colony is just fucking underwater mm-hmm. and we just can't find it. It's hard to find anything in, under any amount of water. I know. It's ridiculous. Under two feet of water, you can barely catch find shit. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. And water also, and it would pull things out and destroy things because unless unless as we learned from the baltic sea anomaly <laughs> episode it's brackish if it's brackish we're fucking good to go i don't think it's brackish it's water. not brackish no. it's not brackish on the inside on the other side it is on closer to land because there's all the fresh water running in and there's salt water and that's what makes the brackish water but on the ocean side it's it's not it's just it's just salt plus if it's if it's near if it's more shallow i mean that's almost harder because you can't really put like sonar equipment right right over super shallow water and you can't dive as well because there's nothing it's not gonna be clear it's just gonna be mm-hmm. fucking muddy as shit the whole time so you yeah you can snorkel but you can't see a goddamn thing yeah did you hear about the ghost of virginia dare i have not heard of the ghost of virginia dare well there is a story and apparently virginia it sounds like there could be a song written about it though there might be <laughs> i will search the country annals of music and see if i can't find it 
Uh, but apparently, Virginia Dare grew up to be pretty fucking hot, even though in the Quartzite Stone it showed that she died when she was five or something. But in this story, she grew up to be an attractive young woman. She was to be wed to a young native warrior. But a medicine man loved her. So to keep her from marrying the other guy, he turned her into a deer. Okay. The other guy was out hunting, and he fucking shot her and killed her and probably ate her. That is unfortunate. Yeah. And so they say that she haunts the area, sometimes as a lady and sometimes as a deer. So it's like a ghost deer? Or lady, depending upon how it feels, I guess. Hmm. I feel like that's not a story that's very grounded in reality. Probably not. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say I would have to agree with you on that one. I'm pretty sure poor little Virginia Dare, like, died. At five. At age five. Right. As did many children. I mean, and obviously this kid's got even more stuff stacked against you. But, I mean, back in those days, it's like, that's why you had, like, 12 fucking kids was because you wanted, like, four of them to survive. And you named them all the exact same because mm -hmm. you liked the name and you wanted one of them to have it. Right? Because, what like, mortality was, like, something like... High. 70% like or something. Very some high. Shit like that. I mean, it was really, really high. So that's pretty much, that's all I really had on this whole situation. On the Roanoke situation? On the Roanoke situation. I mean, so basically, then what would you say, what, what, what do you favor the most as far as what happened to them? Assimilation. I, I feel like they, maybe not all as one group, maybe they went in different ways. Uh, maybe some of them didn't want to assimilate, but I think for the most part, most of them probably did because... Do you Probably really they wanted to live. Do you I mean, want to spend the rest of your, what's going to be your short-ass motherfucking life running away from the natives and starving and being cold? Or would you rather become friendly with them and maybe have a relationship so you can get laid and have a family like you want? Since they're Christian, they probably want to convert them because that's what they like to do is convert people to Christianity. So that's yeah, but I don't think that was that wasn't their reason for being there. In the first oh no, I'm place. sure the re no no, but I'm sure that's that was just a good bonus. I think, I think if anything, it would be a little bit harder as a Christian because you would probably view them as savages, and it would probably be a little bit abhorrent to have to lay with savages. But you know, whatever to like not die or to like meet a worse fate at the hands of other some other quote unquote savages. Yes. So probably they're going to set aside those Christian values there and uh, just in. As far as that's concerned. Because, right. I mean, hell, the Bible and doesn't just, even like, say anything about die. that. So the Bible isn't like thou shalt not have sex with those of different race. It's just very concerned with Well, genders. you know, I mean, most people don't even have Bibles then. That's true. Because they actually the, at this point they probably did no because the one who did the big translating of the this King James who came after Elizabeth oh hey you're right yeah that's why it's called the King James version of go. the Bible that's the one that they have in all the hotels mm -hmm. yeah that is the Holly Bible so who's this see. who's this Gideon fella hmm because <laughs> there's Gideon's Bible too yeah I don't know the in fuck the Beatles that song is. Hmm. neither do I. I don't know Neither who the fuck I. that is, but no. So actually, most people did not yet have Bibles. Okay. Well, that's I, I believe that. So so pretty much what I feel is that they went out to this colony, stayed there for a bit, sent old John White back for some food. He didn't come back. They were hungry. This drought lasted for – they were right in the middle of this drought, so they probably couldn't get a whole lot of growing on the next year either, combined with natives that just didn't really want them there, so they split up blended in and shit they didn't know that jamestown was going to be there in just a few years right uh, i think that in uh, a few years is a long time to survive with basically like yeah. no fucking supplies during no the worst drought shit. in 800 years that's and i think that i don't think that the powahatan Powah chief was lying to them I, I think he probably killed those 15 that were left and he just sort of fibbed on the years mm -hmm. or maybe they mistranslated what the fuck he meant by the years because yeah john smith learned how to speak the, the language but I'm sure right. he wasn't. I feel like John Smith was kind of a dick, and he, you know, kind it's all of. very convenient for him to have been like, oh, by the way, this guy says he killed those settlers, so mystery solved. But then You're there was welcome. also his, yeah, but there was also the, the secretary, but I guess the secretary could have just been trying to, you know, get behind good old John Smith. Right. Yeah. I'm just not 
I'm just not believing a lot of stuff that comes out of John Smith's mouth. No, not so much. Again, he's it's not mostly as, because I think he's an asshole, but not as portra- not as nice as portrayed in the Disney movie. <laughs> in the movie. Disney movie, not right. a lot of not a lot of singing. No, didn't he have a dog too in that movie? I don't know. I don't think he, I even watched Pocahontas all the way through. I don't think I did either. That was sort of in the bad days of Disney. All the, you know, they make a lot of stories that are really fucked up. Like, bing, all nice and happy. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Read some of those Grimm's fairy tales, and they are grim. Oh, I love the Grimm's fairy tales. They are great. Do you read your daughters, the, the real ones, or the... Yes, yeah. I have a I have a nice hardcover edition that I I'm got when shocked. I was like... I'm not shocked. Your daughters kid. are not the kind that want this prissy little disney bullshit they want the blood they want the cut feet they want all that right what do you think joanna do you well i would well number one i'm pretty sure that they're all dead at this point of that i am certain oh yes yes (laughs) i i agree and if i had to make a guess yeah i think it was probably a common i'm sure some of them went hungry i'm sure some of them met you know, a bad fate at the hands of natives. Some of them probably starved to death and died of disease. And I think as they dwindled down, they closed up shop and left. And then the ones that were left assimilated. Perhaps as they died, they took down the buildings they no longer needed. So they've got, they start with over a hundred and they've got enough houses for those people. But some people start dying. So they don't need these extra houses, but they need the fucking wood. Right. So they take the house down and they use it for whatever else they need it for. And I'm not discounting um, the possibility that they might have been discovered by other people trying to colonize. Possibly. And because, I mean, the word Croatoan, it's just so weird that that would be written there, yet practically nothing has been found. Right, right. And either of the areas. And again, that could again, be I mean, they could have met something. They could have met with something bad on the way there, but it's it wasn't very far, and the natives were supposed to be friendly. So I I really buy the assimilation thing, but I feel like if they had like all 119 colonists had gone to Croatoan, that there would be more evidence than what they have found. I mean, it's not a big fucking island, so I feel like they went inland and for whatever reason wrote. Croatoan. Either throw people off their trail or maybe they intended on going there, but since none of them, they didn't have any navigation equipment, so maybe they just didn't know how to get there and they went the wrong way. Could be, or, but I mean, people were better at like navigating by like the stars and stuff at that point. No, sailors were. But I'm sure there But colonists are just, these are just people. These are just people who had some skills. They could build a fucking house. They could. But I feel like including like building a house, building a fire, you kind of like knew what direction. Maybe, maybe. You're facing. Like, they teach that in scouts and stuff without compasses. Totally. It's pretty easy, except for people like me, which fucking suck at it. I couldn't tell you where the fuck north was or look up and be like, oh, yeah. East and west, though. I mean, you can sunrise and sunset. You can kind of navigate by that. These are are pretty much regular people. They're not, they're not. But I'm just saying that regular people back in the day could probably figure out east, could west, probably north, figure south. out but east, west, not, north, south. If they're not 100 percent which way they're going, if they are, they, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But I'm sure it's yeah, pretty I, easy I to feel get like lost. it was, it was probably a combination of unfriendly natives, perhaps some attacks by other people trying to to loot or colonize. Definitely disease, starvation. Definitely freezing disease, to death. starvation. That Maybe kind not of freezing thing. to death, so, but you know, all kinds. Of, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't think when they left there was the full. I don't think it was like all of them all at once, a sudden thing. But no, yeah, there wasn't a full I roster think, when they left. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, I, I think that they lost a good amount of people, and at some point they were just like, "Fuck it, we're out of here." And then, like, whoever was left maybe did assimilate. I think they did because the gray-eyed, blue eyes. You know, that's not. Right. That's, I mean, that's... it's hard to tell, like, one, like, what what's, you know, what's a tall tale and what was actually true and, and actually seen, but... And you'd think that they would have found some of the DNA in the, you know, Roanoke DNA, Roanoke DNA project, but... You know. Although, I mean, that would be really hard. That would be such a small percentage at that point. That's probably true as well. 
because we're talking years. about yeah we're talking about dna that dies back and there i'm sure the gene pool just got got gets bigger and bigger and bigger as time progresses so mm-hmm. i agree i think that's the finding like a needle in a, a specific needle in a pile full of needles yeah it wouldn't surprise me that at some point they're gonna find somebody oh probably eventually but um but well, yeah, yeah I think that and... that's that project is is gonna have is gonna have a hard time probably linking and it's only been going for it. 10 years too yeah only 10 years probably gonna be at least 10 more i'd say before yeah, maybe yeah. they get a hit on something all right then so we uh, we agree on this one we do agree on this one. Well then, uh, that's about all I have. Is that all you have? That's about all I have. It um, would be it would be cool to one day get a definitive answer as to what actually happened. But as in most cases, we probably won't. Yeah. And we have, have no answers for you people. So. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yep. But, you know, we don't promise answers. We don't. <laughs> all right then. Well, we are stranger than, and thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Take care now. Do you enjoy the Stranger Than podcast? Please let us know. Rate and comment on iTunes. Check out and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash stranger than podcast. Our Twitter at underscore stranger than or drop us an email stranger than podcast at gmail.com. That's stranger than podcast, all one word at gmail.com. Also feel free to email us any strange, mysterious or misunderstood stories or topic suggestions that you'd like to share or hear about.